welcome back to more Mysterious Recipes with me and her. Hi guys. And today we're going to be making bakers, bakers and mash. mash. As we all know, it is a truth universally acknowledged that nothing will ever quite work up your appetite quite as well as being in a creepy, cold castle with a monster stalking you. So we've worked up quite an appetite, exactly. and um, Nancy keeps rubbing it in her, our face, all the good food that she gets to eat. Today we are going to be making the bangers and mash from Curse of Blackmore Manor, because we just couldn't stand the jealousy any longer that we didn't get any, and she did. So let's get started. First things first, you're going to need, obviously, some sausage. So what we're using for this today is we have some link pork sausage. Um, if you can't find this specifically, you can use whatever kind of sausage you can get your hands on, but if you can, we found this at like a country, sort of old-fashioned country store. You could use whatever kind of sausage we wanted to use, pork, but honestly, chicken or beef sausage would probably be really good too. So for the two of us, let's go off of amounts for like two people. We're gonna cut off about four servings of this, about four lengths worth of this first. We've got our sausage cut up into links. If you have sausage that's already cut up in links, that saves you a step. But now we have a skillet that we're heating to medium high heat. We're just gonna throw a small drizzle of oil in there. And then add our sausages and we're gonna sear them on all sides. While our sausages are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and get our mashed potatoes going. For that, we've got two large potatoes that we've peeled and chopped, and we're gonna bring those to a boil. Once it's boiled, we're gonna cut the heat back a little bit and let them cook for another 10 to 15 minutes until they're tender. Also while that's going, we're going to go ahead and start prepping the ingredients for the gravy. We're going to take half of a large onion and chop that. You can just slice it thinly, but if you look at the picture, you don't really see any visible pieces of onion in there, so we're going to chop this up pretty small. And we're also going to, while we're at it, chop up one garlic clove. So we've set our sausages aside for now. We're going to keep using the same pan, but we've cut the heat back to medium and we're gonna add two tablespoons of butter to that. And to the butter, we're gonna add our chopped onion and our garlic. We're also gonna add just a sprinkle of salt and then cook this until the onions get nice and dark. I also forgot um, the potatoes, I want them to have a little extra flavor, so we are also going to add a half teaspoon of rosemary and a half teaspoon of thyme to the water while it boils. Our onions are looking nice and dark, so we're gonna go ahead and add some flour. Now the gravy, looking at the picture, looks like it's definitely a very thin gravy, so we're only gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of flour. That should thicken it up a fair amount, but we don't really want it to be very, very thin. And 
we're gonna cook that for another about a minute to two minutes just to take the raw taste out of the flour. Okay, let's get started on the gravy itself. Or let's start turning the onions into a gravy. We're gonna add one cup of some decent quality stock. You can use chicken stock, beef stock, but probably don't get the cheapest that you can just because your gravy is largely gonna depend on how tasty your stock is. And then we still want this to have some extra flavor, so we're gonna add half a teaspoon of thyme. Half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And this is optional, but I've seen it used a couple of times and it sounds good. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, but you can leave that out if you just hate the idea. Now that we've got our our gravy ingredients in there, we are also going to add the sausages back into the pan and let them cook with that. Make sure that they get nice and hot and make sure that if they weren't cooked 100% fully through before that they get that way now. And at this point, that's really all the assembly that we have to do for the sausages and gravy. We're just gonna let that keep cooking until the gravy is thickened the sausages are cooked through and this is something that you can do before you start any of the other stuff if you want to and just let it keep simmering until you're ready to serve of course if you're making a larger batch of gravy or cooking for more people you'll be able to keep cooking this for longer just because you'll have more liquid there that's not going to cook off as quickly good yeah that is look good so we're also going to cut the heat back to at least medium low on this now Our potatoes are looking nice and tender, so we're also going to drain these now. So let's get our mashed potatoes put together. We're going to take our drained potatoes, put them back in our pot. Honestly, this is such a small batch, batch I'm just going to mash oh. it with a fork. This is mash such a small it. batch, I'm just going to mash it with a fork. Our potatoes are mashed pretty well. We're gonna add two tablespoons of butter to that. I still want the potatoes to have a decent amount of flavor on their own, so I'm also gonna add three tablespoons of sour cream to that. I also wanna add a little bit of salt and pepper. Lastly, the potatoes are still pretty thick, so at this point we're just going to add just enough milk to get it to whatever thickness we want. However thick you like your potatoes is up to you. So our sausages and gravy are going. And so our potatoes are done, so we're gonna get our peas ready. Those are only gonna need a few minutes. We're using frozen baby peas. We're gonna take about a cup of those, put them in a pot with just enough water to cover it, and bring it to a boil over high. Since we're using baby peas, these just came to a boil. I cut it back a little bit and we're just gonna cook that for another minute or two. If you're not using baby peas, they're gonna need a little longer. Yes, what she said. These are done, we're gonna drain off the water and add them back to the pot. And now we're gonna add two tablespoons of butter and some salt into the peas and stir them so that they have some flavor. We're done, we're gonna plate this, and we'll be back I'm so you. hungry! Oh, is that my dinner? Or wrap! Let's see what I got today. Is 
I can help you find a werewolf or what? I think this might be a new favorite. Ah! No, I don't need a knife. Okay. Let's give this a try. Let's put a little potato and sausage together. I just got some herbiness from the potatoes. Mmm. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna try a little gravy on its own and see how the gravy came out. So I know that I said the Dijon is optional because if you really, really hate mustard, I understand you might not want it in there. But if you don't really, really hate mustard, add it because it, is, because it definitely is fantastic with it. The peas are very good too, but I mean, I have peas fairly often already. So while they're delicious, they're nothing really unusual. But definitely take the time to find baby peas if you can. I just got a mouthful with all everything in one bite. Oh yeah, I haven't done a mouthful with the peas it is yet. Let me do delicious. that. Delicious. Let me get some gravy, some potatoes, some lime peas, perfection, some sausage, even maybe. Mm. So what we learned about Blackmore Manor is we've tried two different recipes from them so far. Far, both of them have been like some of the best recipes. Like whoever make, was doing their catering knew their stuff. I've made that. Um, dog eye meat pie so many times mm -hmm. and I think it's the most common recipe I've used from the cookbook. Yeah, I've done that one a few times too. They're definitely like recipes that you definitely find yourself craving after and you're like, let me do this for supper tonight. Just no Nancy Drew theme aside, just that sounds really good for dinner. Mm-hmm. She would like a bite, please. Lulu wants a bite with some sad eyes on top. Oh. The Lulu is coincidental. It's just her nickname. It was not Nancy Drew themed or inspired. <sighs> Did she get a bite? I was about to give it to her on my fork and then I'm like, no, my brain is completely fried by how good this is. <laughs> she gets a tiny bite of sausage. You ready? Keep her away from the plate. We have disaster from the past. <gasps> oh no, it fell. Go get it. Eagle. It's Lulu approved. It's already gone. <laughs> a good sausage is key for the recipe also so far the recipes from that game have been definitely like very filling very satisfying it was like if you were exploring and solving mysteries in the cold and damp all day long and you're exhausted and you're cold and you're starving and miserable they've been like very satisfying meals that at the end of the day run you a hot bath order you some room service and this will cure just about everything that ails you definitely she wants more it was that good oh look at that already gone summary things that we liked about it definitely take the time to caramelize your onions if you can because delicious when you try when you have the gravy on its own you definitely taste that the onions and the Dijon are what makes the gravy to me um, when you're eating it with the sausage, honestly, the sausage that we have was definitely very heavily seasoned. It had a little bit of a, a spice kick to it. So the gravy wasn't like the primary flavor when you're eating mm -hmm. bites that have the sausage too. But when you get... It works so well together though. But I would definitely, when I make this again, do at least a double batch of gravy and then just use the gravy on other things throughout the week because it is really good just on its own, whether or not you have it with everything else. Lucy gives it a 10. I'm just gonna go eat all the rest of this, so. Uh, I think this definitely rates in my top 10 favorite ones that we've done so far in this cookbook project. Definitely, definitely. Don't ask me right now to say what number in the top 10 because I am too content to really use my brain at this I point. I don't think it'd be a fair judgment. Would I be able to think about the others right now? Probably not. My no. brain is like in a happy sausage baby face. <laughs> very satisfying. Our resident monster approves. What do you think? Was it a keeper? She said she looks pretty satisfied. I think that's a yes. Anyway, that's it for today. <laughs> she found it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for today's recipe. Um, at this point, I'm not 100% sure what our next recipe will be. But if you guys have any suggestions, this was a suggestion. Comment it below. Yes, thank you. It was, yes, yes, thank you. It was fantastic. Um, definitely, so let definitely us know what you good suggestion there. Next. Very good suggestion. But, um, there are still two sausages in that pan. And there's some more mashed potatoes in that pot. And there's some gravy. <laughs> We're gonna go shove sausage and gravy all over our faces and we'll see y'all next time.
But right now we have much more pressing things on our mind. So bye bye. Bye. Mystery time. There's a mystery. Here, you can get this part of me. Hey, you're trampling on her rug. Get my back. Wow. And here we go again. She's so fast. You can't even see her. She's so fast. She's like lightning and thunder. No, no brightest tool in the shed. <laughs>